so happy that you're doing a policy briefing. Uh, one of the things that I, um, being only here for the short seven months, I think it's a critically important to increase our presence um, in talking about the impact uh, of people like my mother who is now in full esteem that had to travel through Jordan to get to come and see her living grandmother in the West Bank. Well, I gotta tell you, when Americans like my mother is denied entry through Tel Aviv and has to be forced through Jordan, that should be counted as a denial. The irony here is that the annual $3.8 billion in military aid to Israel come, comes from average Americans like us, the taxpayers. And we are the same citizens, the same people who give this $3.8 billion a year. We are the same people who are being abused by the state that we give the money to. I can confidently state that the ways individuals are treated through the process of entry to Israel is one exhibit of the overarching racist and discriminatory system of oppression that the Israeli government currently enacts on its own citizens, Palestinians living under its military occupation, and travelers from various countries entering through its borders its, it controls. How we're suffering every single day, how we're getting threatened, intimidated, how we're getting killed, arrested, injured, and during, like, we're facing a lot of stuff that us as children, as, like, in this world, are not supposed to be facing or living. So we make some policy recommendations in this policy paper that are quite moderate. It's for the U.S. to follow its own laws. No more, no less. The U.S. government has taken the side of a foreign country, Israel, over the rights of its own citizens again and again. So, you know, for folks like AMP and all the folks in here who still keep the flame lit and try and try and try again, um, I thank you and I commend you for that. And, uh, you know, I've been very proud. I was very proud to go there. Despite what happened, I still have no regrets and I would do it again.